based on the study of one verse of the Quran or the Torah or the Injil or the Gospel in isolation. Otherwise, you can make a mistake and you'll be very embarrassed afterwards. See? This is why this verse is constructed like this. I ordered the angels to make prostration. They all did except this one. That is why, to teach methodology. But when you go to the whole book, now you're no longer a schoolboy, now you're a scholar. <laughs> when you go to the whole book, then you find that angels don't have a choice. No. When an angel is given an order, the angel must obey. But he disobeyed. Therefore, he cannot be an angel. Mika. This is Mika. We've been waiting on him all the time. <laughs> Mashallah. Welcome, Mika. Uh, angels have to obey. But he disobeyed. So he could not have been an angel. See? And then when you go to the rest of the book, what can I mean a jinn? He was not an angel, he was a jinn. So I'm just taking this by the way to warn you, you must have proper methodology for studying the Quran, for studying the Torah, for studying the Gospel and so on. Good. So Allah spoke to the angels and said to them, this is now the second paragraph of the first page of history. And he said to them, I'm going to place on earth one who will be Khalifa, an Arabic word. Hold on to it for a little while if you don't mind. Khalifa, okay? I'm going to place on earth one who will be Khalifa. All right. So what do the angels say? Now, they have no knowledge except what Allah teaches them. An angel can't go and do research. So. No. <laughs> they say in response, oh, they're horrified. Why are they horrified? Because they already know. Because Allah has already told them that this business of Khalifa is going to cause the historical process to be filled with fasad, that which corrupts and also destroys while corrupting, and also bloodshed. Why are you doing this? When this is going to result, Khalifa, this is going to result in facade and in bloodshed, universal facade. Facade, remember? That which corrupts, but destroys as well, destructive corruption. That by placing on earth this human being, you are now and appointing him as Khalifa, you are now going to allow the historical process to be filled with facade and bloodshed. So what is this Khalifa? Which is so bad is the angels are horrified. Allah responds and says to them, I know what you don't know. There's more to the subject that you don't know. There is more to the subject of Khalifa that you do not know, which justifies my placing human beings on earth. Then he taught Adam 
alayhi salam the rest of the subject concerning khilafa concerning khilafa I have not as yet translated khalifa for you okay no and having given to Adam alayhi salam the complete knowledge that the angels did not have on the subject all that they knew about the subject is that this Khalifa is going to cause facade, corruption which destroys, and bloodshed, rivers of blood. So he taught to Adam alayhi salam. So now Adam alayhi salam has full knowledge of the subject of Khilafa. And then he says, he places the subject before the angels, come on, tell me. They say, we have no knowledge. Okay, Adam, you tell them. And he then noted. And having informed them, and now the angels now have the full knowledge that they didn't have before. Then he gave the angels the order to prostrate before Adam, alayhi salam. And they all prostrated except this one, Iblis. So what is this Khilafa? Something very important. Because it's there on the first page of history, second paragraph. To answer the question, we don't need to go to a university or a professor. We go back to the Quran. That's where we could get the answer. And when we go back to the Quran, we go to Surah to Saad, 100 times I keep on repeating this verse. Listen to it. Allah speaks to Dawood alayhi salam, David. And I'm so happy that my brother Mika is here now. He says, Ya Dawood, O David, Inna ja'alnaka khalifatan fil ab. O David, I am appointing you as khalifa on earth. Oh, now we're getting some more knowledge about khilafa. David is Khalifa on earth. So now, what is your function as Khalifa? Fahkum bain al nasi bil haqq. Oh. So a Khalifa is one who governs. We're talking here about governance. A Khalifa is one who rules. A Khalifa is one who establishes law. Oh, this is heavy business now. We're talking about a state. On the first page of history, in the second paragraph, we are told that Allah placed us here on earth to establish a state, which is a Khilafa state. And the David, Nabi Dawood alayhi salam, he establishes the Khilafa state. And the Khilafa state is one in which governance is based on al-haq or truth. And remember, truth did not come in the Quran for the first time. Don't be so foolish. <laughs> truth has been coming all through history. Truth even came to the Brazilian Indians who showed so much respect for a river. They don't go hunting buffaloes for fun. 
as Europe did, killing them for fun. No, I don't know what kind of religion came out of Europe. It could not be the religion that came from Jesus, alayhi salam, no. It came from somebody else. And so, Khalifa has to establish a state in which governance is based on truth and truth is eternal and truth is universal. Truth is perennial. Uh, I'm sorry, my language is becoming a little bit too difficult now for those who are French speaking. <laughs> truth is eternal forever. Truth is absolute. It comes from Allah. Truth is universal. It has always been there in history. And truth has come for the last time here in this book, the Quran. And the Khilafah state is the state in which law is based on truth. Governance is based on truth. Which has come from Allah. Not from Washington. But then the verse goes on to say something more. Allah warns David alayhi salam, Dawood. Wala tattabi al hawa. O David, do not swerve from establishing law based on truth, which has come from Allah, and pursue your own agenda based on what your mind, your heart, your rational faculty tells you to do. That you will discuss in parliament and you will decide in parliament. Don't govern on the basis of that. Wala tattabi'il hawa fayadillaka an sabilillah. If you do that, you're going to be misguided from the way of the Lord. I think you're beginning to understand now what's coming. Huh? What Dajjal has done today. I think you're beginning to understand. Inna al-lazina yadilluna an sabilillahi lahum Or this part makes you shake. Lahum azabun shadidun bima Bima nasu yawm al hisab. Surely those who depart from governance, from rule, from establishment of law based on the truth which has come from the Lord God, all through history. With Moses, with Jesus, with Abraham, with David, with Solomon, with all of them. Those who depart from that truth to pursue their own agenda. For them there is terror and who are constantly, consequently misguided. For them there is terrible punishment. Because they forgot the day of accounts. Okay. So that's our Zaman. Now look at Akhir Zaman. Is there anywhere on the face of Allah's earth? Anywhere? Not even in Russia. Which is now returning to Christianity, to Orthodox Christianity. Not even in Russia that is returning to Orthodox Christianity. No way on the face of the earth. Most certainly not in Saudi Arabia. Oh, come on. Not even in Iran. No way on Allah's earth today. Is Allah's law supreme? No way. Rather, 
we now have a model of a state which is the opposite of the Khilafa state. It's called a Republican state. And a Republican state is one in which governance is of the people, by the people, for the people. Have you heard it? Did you hear it? Remember? That's a Republican state. Of the people, by the people, for the people. Oh, so the people have now taken over from the Lord God. This is for Yadillaka and Sabirillah. Around the world in Akhilu Zaman we have this. And nobody cries. There's no, there's no tears. No, everybody eat the chicken biryani and go home and sleep. That's what we do. No heart is weeping. None. The Byzantine Empire, the Orthodox Christian Byzantine Empire, was an empire that sought to recognize the supreme, the supremacy of the Lord God. That's what they did. And along come a force which is, has to be recognized as evil, the Ottoman Empire, which destroys the Orthodox Christian Byzantine Empire with a bogus jihad. And this <laughs> Ottoman Empire then proceeds to rule on the basis, ah, it didn't come from Allah. Is this the truth? Is this the truth on which you are ruling? That you can now wage bogus jihad for five or six hundred years on the innocent Orthodox Christians? And because you are empowered with a power that you can defeat them, when you defeat them, you take their women as slaves and you have a something called a harem. I don't know where it came from, the harem. Filled with Orthodox Christian women as slaves and you have your children with them. That's the new Islam, yeah, with the Ottoman Empire. And then when you defeat the Ottoman, the Orthodox Christians, and they want to have a truce, part of the agreement, they got to hand over by force some of the Christian boys. You know it. Don't tell me you don't know it. And these boys are converted to Islam by force. And if you refuse, you're killed. This is the new Islam, yeah? And then these boys are trained to become the elite fighting force of the Ottoman Empire, the Yanisari. And so when the Ottoman army goes to fight a Christian people, their own sons are the elite fighting force fighting against them. This is putting salt in a wound. And then they take the capital city of the Orthodox Christian world, Constantinople, with its uh, major cathedral, uh, Hagia Sophia, Hagia Sophia, a Christian cathedral, and Allah asks you in the Quran to protect them. Protect them. That's what He says in the Quran, Surah Al Hajj. And they take the Orthodox Christian Cathedral, which has been the major cathedral of the Orthodox Christian world for 1,000 years, and they convert it shamefully into a masjid. Is that truth? Huh? No, that can't be truth. Truth is always just. There's justice in truth. And this is unjust what you've done to take a Christian cathedral and convert it into a masjid. So at the first page of history, 
we have the obligation as human beings faced on, placed on earth who have faith in the one God, the obligation to establish a state in which governance and rule and law will be based on the truth which has been coming to mankind from the time of Moses and Abraham, Allah's blessings be upon them, until the time of Muhammad, Allah's blessings be upon him. That state no longer exists today because of a people who have taken over the world and have prohibited, prohibited the establishment of such a state. I have one more paragraph. A, pa a Pakistan which says that it is an Islamic Republic. An Iran which says that it is an Islamic Republic. And I don't know how many others are saying. Oh, but there's only one state, only one, for which you can use the word Islamic. Only one. If there's a second one, let me know. Had it come by email from Disneyland? <laughs> Only one. It's a Khilafah state, that's all. So if you say you are an Islamic state, the implication is you are a Khilafah state. Can a Khilafah state which has an obligation to establish Allah's law as a supreme law, which has an obligation to govern on the basis of truth which has come from the Lord God. Can a Khilafah state be a member of the United Nations organization? Huh? When Articles 24 and 25 of the Charter of the United Nations declares that the Security Council has supreme authority in the world? No? No? But uh, Pakistan declares it's an Islamic State. Yeah. Uh, can an Islamic State be also a republic? You are a Khilafah state, meaning Allah is supreme, but a Republican state, meaning of the people, by the people, for the people. You cannot be both an Islamic state and a Republican state. No, you cannot be both an Islamic state and a Republican state. No, 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 no. But that's what they say. Yeah. <laughs> it sounds very foolish. Nowhere today do we have a Khilafah state. On the contrary, we have a bogus substitute called the Islamic Republic. I told them that in Iran, they, didn't, they were not too pleased with me. <laughs> and now if that was not bad enough, we have ISIS. Or we have uh, uh, Daesh. Which now says that we are going to establish the Khilafah state and you have the Khalifa, his name is Baghdadi. Huh? But uh, do you establish a Khilafah state with a jihad based on weapons that come, you know Santa Claus? Santa Claus, he, he, he has a reindeer come in the sky Christmas time. And Santa Claus is providing state-of-the-art weapons to them. Oh, yeah. Missiles. All the machinery to them, all the, everything that they need. Santa Claus bringing it for them. Santa Claus providing all the American dollars. Yeah. Santa Claus protecting them. This fellow Santa Claus, I wonder why he's so much interested in this 
Kila first hit. No, no, you can't fool us. You cannot establish a state based on truth while taking weapons and taking money and taking training from those who are waging war on the truth and seeking to destroy the truth in the world. So tell Baghdadi this is a false jihad. We come now to the last paragraph that we need for tonight and then we stop. After Allah had said to the angels, make sajda, make prostration before Adam. After that event, he then announced to Adam, alayhi salam, you and your wife go and live in paradise. Hmm. Oh, so marriage is something for paradise, eh? Marriage is not for tears on her pillow every night that she sleeps. Marriage is not for pots and pans flying all over the house, no. Marriage is for paradise. Hmm? So if your marriage is not... Uh, a heavenly marriage, something is wrong. Go and live in heaven and eat and drink from what is in heaven to your heart's content. Oh, but do not approach this shajara, this tree. Do not Approach this tree for takuna min al because that is the road to wickedness. Approaching that tree is the road to wickedness and to oppression and to injustice and so on. I am so happy that Mika is here with us tonight. Which tree is it? Is it a mulberry tree or an apple tree? Yeah. Which tree is it? The Salafi says, this is his methodology, and I have discussed it in this book, that if Allah and his messenger and the early Muslims have not given ta'wil, interpretation, we have no right to interpret. Okay? But we don't have any interpretation for the tree. So the Salafi method is that you have to accept it's a literal tree, unless Allah and his messenger. And the early Muslims have interpreted the tree to be something other than literally a tree. Which tree is it? Do not approach this tree. Because if you do, that's the road to wickedness and oppression and injustice. Boom. So which tree is it? This is important. This is the beginning of history. Maybe this tree has implications for the end of history. I'm happy that Mika is here because... There are differences now in what is found in the, uh, the previous scriptures and what is in the Quran. And as we look at the differences, we must use the rational faculty to judge on this issue. And the heart must seek to locate the truth wherever it is to be found. The answer to the question, which tree is it, is to be found in Surah Taha, verse 120, where Satan comes to Adam 
in paradise and speaks to him. And he says, yeah, Adam. I'm here as a friend. Huh? Let's talk. Hal adulluka ala shajaratil khul wa mulkin la yabla Adam, are you listening to me? May I explain to you the tree? Can I invite you to come to this tree which is the tree of eternity that you will live forever that you will live forever and also that this tree is a tree of estate, mulk, and it is a state which will never decay, never decay, meaning eternal rule, eternal life, and eternal rule. And when they approach the tree, something happened. They lost their spiritual innocence because they're in heaven, in Jannah, so the spiritual life. And they became conscious of their nakedness. And they took the leaves of the trees of heaven to try to cover their nakedness. Now, the reason why there is this link with the sexual life Mm -hmm. the, the reproductive organs is because spiritual innocence was destroyed by the approach to the tree. The tree of eternal life, not the tree of knowledge at all, the tree of eternal life and the tree of eternal rule. That when a people have in their hearts the longing for eternal life, they are lusting for life. It is lust. And that lust for life destroys your spiritual innocence. And when a people want to rule eternally, because that is what Pax Judaica is all about. From Pax Britannica to Pax Americana to Pax Judaica to rule eternally. When a people seek to rule eternally, that is a form of lust. And it is a lust which destroys spiritual innocence. And so they became conscious of their nakedness. And so anyone who has in his heart the lust for life, I want to live and live and live and live and live and live and live, and live. you can't enter into heaven. On the contrary, the Christian who is a Christian, the Jew who is a Jew, the Muslim who is a Muslim would say, the Lord gives life and the Lord takes life and blessed is the Lord. I don't want to live forever. I don't have a lust to live forever. No. Whenever he calls, I go. 
لِيَبْلُوَكُمْ أَيُّكُمْ أَحْسَنُ عَمَرَ He created life and death to test you. To test you. He created life and he created death to test you. And so if there's nuclear war coming, shake him around, where can I go to be safe? Where in the world? Tell me, tell me I want to go. I don't want to die. A Muslim, like his brother who is a Christian, who is a, and his brother who is a Jew, is not afraid to die. No. We are not a people who lust for life. <laughs> so we are not approaching that tree that Adam alayhi salam is prohibited. Do you see how we are tying the beginning with the end? Hmm? Nor do we want to rule the world. We don't have that in our hearts. And to rule eternally, that is what they want to do. They want a Pax Judaica in which a holy state of Israel will rule eternally. And we say, that is the tree. That is the tree. You are prohibited from approaching. Because that's the tree to wickedness and oppression and injustice. So what we have here tonight, and I want to end now because I've taken you to the first page of history. And I take you to the first paragraph and the second paragraph and the third and that's enough. You can do the rest by yourself. I want to end as we began with the verse of, uh, I won't tell you which surah, you'll tell me, where Allah says, I am the first and I am the last. And I am that which is external and I am that which is internal. And I have knowledge of all things. That the beginning is therefore connected with the end. And if you want to study the state of the world today, if you want to penetrate the state of the world today, that is Akhiru Zaman, you got to begin your studies with this is the importance of today's seminar. And finally, that you cannot study the subject unless you have proper methodology. And proper methodology is the epistemology. Don't be afraid of this big word. The knowledge comes from both external and internal sources. And the externally acquired knowledge must be harmoniously integrated with the internally received knowledge. Majma'ul Bahrain, the place where the two oceans meet. And the, the example, the model of such scholarship in Akhirul Zaman is whom? Khidr alayhi salam. When I sat down with Mika and I introduced him to kid, I call him Mr. Green. <laughs> and I introduced him to Khidr alayhi salam in the Quran. And he said to me, but this is exactly Jesus. This man is just like Jesus. Huh? Nabi Isa alayhi salam. So we'll end now. This is the epistemology. This is the methodology to be able to study the subject. If you don't have this methodology, you can't study the subject. Internal knowledge will only come when you have faith. And then Allah gives you nur, light. The nur is not sold in Negro. The nur, the nur cannot be bought in any supermarket. 
وَعَلَمُوا عَنَّ اللَّهَ يَحُولُ بَيْنَ الْمَرِّ وَقَلْبِهِ Allah watches the heart. And if the heart is sincere, and if you, you work for it, you plant, then you reap. Allah will give you nur. And with that nur, you now be able to receive knowledge internally. And then you can combine and harmoniously integrate, integrate the external with the internal knowledge and follow in the footsteps of Khidr alayhi salam. And then you'll be able to study the subject successfully. We pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bless our audience tonight, uh, that you may be able to advance in knowledge as you study Akhiru Zaman with Awwalu Zaman. Rabbana taqabbal minna inna ka inta samir alim. Wa tuba alina ya mawlana inna ka inta tawab rahim. Bi rahmatika ya arham al-rahmi. Ameen. The question is, is there any presence in the beginning of history of Dajjal that we can link it with the end of history, the false messiah, the Antichrist? Do we find the Antichrist in the beginning of history, that we can link him with the end of history? The answer is that it is most certainly the Jal, the false messiah or the Antichrist who has created modern Western civilization. This is his civilization, which is built on a mysterious alliance between some Christians and some Jews. And the alliance is cemented with Zionism. So it's a Judeo-Christian Zionist alliance. But there's little Christianity in it. It seems to be more godless than Christian. It seems to be more godless than Jewish. So you have to look outside of this alliance to find the true Christian and to find the true Jew. This civilization is led by people who are taking it in the direction of the tree, the prohibited tree. A lust to live forever and a lust to rule the world and to rule the world forever. Pax Britannica made way for Pax Americana and Pax Americana is now making way for Pax Judaica so that an Israel could seek to rule the world forever. So yes, the Jal is most certainly present there. Maybe he is sitting on the tree. <laughs> This is a brilliant 